My story started in the majestic beauty of the French Alps. It's a place where you might naturally expect someone to fall in love with mountains, become a professional skier or a hiking guide, right? Now, don't get me wrong, I still love mountains, but my personal journey took an unexpected twist. Instead of devoting myself to life on land, I found myself captivated by the enchanting underwater life. My journey with whales started when I was just about three or four years old. I was sitting in front of a flickering screen and watching Free Willy on VHS. Now, little did I know, these moments would ignite a burning passion for whales, especially killer whales that we also call orcas. They were a captivating departure from my mountain landscapes. They were powerful, they were mysterious, and just incredibly fascinating. As I dove deeper into the world of whales, I found out about the numerous challenges they face. Habitat loss, overfishing, prey availability, and noise, entanglement, climate change, and pollution. It was then that I made a promise to myself, a promise that would shape my life's path. I would dedicate my life to studying and preserving these magnificent creatures. Now, 20 years passed, and I'm a master's student in an international European program dedicated to marine environments. And I find myself at a veterinary facility in Belgium, ready to participate in my very first marine mammal necropsy, which is a post-mortem examination. On the autopsy table laid a seemingly ordinary looking dolphin, but what unfolded during that necropsy shook me to my core and revealed a troubling reality. At first, I was so excited, sitting so close to such a beautiful dolphin. But as we began the examination, excitement turned to horror. You see, the dolphin was riddled with parasites. Its blubber layer was so thin, it was a fraction of what a healthy individual should have. As we opened the stomach and intestines, our fears were confirmed. Millions of parasitic worms had invaded this once healthy male. The message was clear. This long and draining parasite infestation caused prolonged starvation before the dolphin washed ashore lifeless. But one question remained. Why would such a formidable predator succumb to parasites? The answer was a silent threat lurking beneath our ocean surface. Forever chemicals. These are a type of chemicals often referred to as persistent organic pollutants. They possess a remarkable trait. They're incredibly stable and long lasting. These include infamous compounds such as PCBs or polychlorinated biphenyls, chlorinated pesticides like DDT and brominated flame retardants. These flame retardants are the stuff you could have found in your couch or cabinets before the 2010s, and their role was to prevent your couch from catching on fire. And you might have heard about DDT because it almost caused the disappearance of the bald eagle in the United States before it got banned. Now, these chemicals have been extremely useful in many applications, but they carry a dark secret. When they accumulate at high concentrations within animals, they have the capacity to suppress immune responses, leaving the animal vulnerable to diseases and to parasites. But the issue with forever chemicals goes beyond their immediate impact. What's truly concerning is their ability to persist in the environment for decades. In the late 60s, a pivotal report from Sweden reported the presence of these chemicals like PCBs, not only in the water, but in the organisms living in it. And then we discovered that these chemicals stick to fats and they play a sort of contaminant game of hot potato, increasing in concentrations as they move up the food web. So marine life, starting with plankton, 
absorb them from the water and pass them along when eaten. So whales and dolphins, as apex predators, accumulate the highest amounts. And because of an inactive gene in their DNA, they can't easily detoxify their bodies, and that leads to contaminant buildup. On top of that, whales and dolphins need a lot of fat to stay cold, uh, warm in those cold waters, so they accumulate the highest doses. At such high concentrations, these chemicals not only affect their immune and endocrine systems, but they affect their ability to reproduce. So if we go back to our Belgian dolphin, the most likely scenario is that after a small infection, it started to starve and use its blubber for energy. The chemicals that were stored in the blubber were then redistributed into the bloodstream. And this release likely led to further immune system failures, which allowed the parasites to take advantage of its weakened body. This heart-wrenching experience pushed me to focus all my energy on the largest dolphin species, the killer whale. It is the most contaminated animal on the planet. Why? Because it sits at the very top of the food web, so it accumulates the highest amounts. We know this from killer whale research in the North Pacific, but many other populations are not receiving enough attention. So I decided to dedicate nearly five years of my life to study the dangers faced by North Atlantic killer whales. The results of my PhD thesis have shown that diet and contaminants vary across North Atlantic killer whales. Killer whales that live in Norway and Iceland eat mainly fish like herring, but some individuals also consume marine mammals. They have a mixed diet. But in Canada, killer whales prefer marine mammals. So they eat belugas and narwhals as well as ring seals in the Arctic, and they prefer large baleen whales and porpoises in Eastern Canada. But what's truly fascinating is the impact of these diet preferences on contaminant levels. Killer whales that eat mainly fish have lower levels of these contaminants that are considered a bit safer. But killer whales that eat marine mammals show elevated concentrations of these chemicals, which puts their health at risk. Even those that have a mixed diet that eat both fish and marine mammals show dangerous levels of contaminants. It all comes back to this ability of these chemicals to amplify as they move up the food web. I recently came back from killer whale fieldwork in Iceland, and it was quite amazing. Now picture this, I was out on the water collecting photographic evidence from a well-known part of Iceland at killer whales, and then something really cool happened. Three of the pod's youngest members, the calves, decided to pay our boat a visit. They started to swim next to us. They were rolling and frolicking in the water. They even treated us to the enchanting sight of them blowing bubbles, an experience that's just as adorable as it sounds. They engaged in captivating display. They were tail slapping and swimming beneath us. Now, child me would have been in heaven. And this experience filled me with a profound sense of connection to these whales. But I also felt a little pinch in my heart. You see, there is this well-known phenomenon called maternal transfer. Killer whale moms need to produce high-fat milk for their babies so that they can grow quickly and stay healthy. But where do you think this fat-rich milk comes from? The mom's own blubber that has been acting as a contaminant sink for her whole life. So as the mom feeds her baby to make it healthy, she also passes down up to 70% of the contaminants she has stored in her body. As a result, up to half of newborn killer whales might not make it past their first year. We came back to the same spot in Iceland multiple times, and every time our young friends welcomed us back with their playful behavior. It was then that I truly understood the intelligence and social nature of killer whales, along with their remarkable capacity for connection. This filled me with a profound desire to nurture and protect these young killer whales so they can, they can grow into the strong and resilient adults they're destined to become. Our entire oceanic ecosystems depend on the fate of whales. Baleen whales, like this mighty fin whale, play a pivotal role in the circulation of nutrients, both upwards and downwards from the surface of the ocean to the bottom. 
they act as natural fertilizers, facilitating phytoplankton blooms, the foundational organisms of the marine food web. On the other hand, toothed whales, like killer whales and dolphins, act as ecosystem regulators. They control the populations of their prey species and maintain a harmonious balance within their ecosystems. In short, our oceans depend on whales to thrive, and we bear the responsibility of ensuring their well-being. But the threat of contaminants still hang over us. Even though some chemicals have been banned, enormous quantities of contaminated waste still linger in decaying warehouses. There, they could be exposed to the elements and could leach into the environment, triggering an environmental catastrophe. In 2001, the United Nations signed a global treaty to phase out these persistent organic pollutants by 2028. This goal is slipping away. We must urge our decision makers to take decisive action. Proper disposal of contaminated waste is urgent, but we must also prevent the release of newer, potentially more harmful contaminants. Usually, as one chemical gets banned, another often takes its place with enough chemical variation to avoid previous legislation, which creates a harmful cycle. Chemical pollution has been identified as one of the key threats to wildlife and human health in modern times. It is time to give our planet the relief it needs by reducing existing contamination through concrete actions. Now, for the Belgian dolphin that first inspired me, it's already too late. But if we act now, we can still protect the whales and dolphins that are with us. In 1972, we banned DDT in the United States to save the bald eagles. And what happened? The concentrations went down and allowed the eagles to slowly recover after two decades. Our oceans will take longer to recover. But if we act now, we can still protect the, the future of killer whales. Together, we can make a difference and ensure that these individuals continue to inspire awe and reverence for generations to come. Now, my personal wish is to witness these three Icelandic killer whale calves grow into strong and powerful adults. I dream of seeing them live a long life, a symbol of hope in our relentless battle for a cleaner and healthier planet. Thank you.